Hey everybody, this is Steve Weaver. Uh, welcome to Mind Your Own Business. As you know, this podcast is intended to help business owners and CEOs navigate the crazy, treacherous waters that we're in today. And I am really, really uh, pleased to have Wade Rasmussen here today. Wade, welcome. Thanks, Steve. I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, and I, I love your location. Um, you know, I'm guessing you may be in Phoenix and this is a wallpaper. Um, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think we both would like to be where your wallpaper is. True that, yes. Yeah. So, I mean, let's dive in. You know, you talk to lots of businesses. You talk to uh, people who are interested in your services, which we'll talk a little bit about. But what do people say uh, is going on out there when they connect with you? Great question. You know, a lot of times I get uh, people uh, that have been referred to me, and it might be a first-time conversation, or it might be um, you know entrepreneurs that I've worked with forever. And you know, the the questions that they ask me are, "How are things going?" And when they when they say that. Um, they're, they're also thinking about how is the economy impacting uh, a Mara fund and my clients. And so they're concerned about the economy. They're concerned about inflation. And they try to get ideas to mitigate some of those things. And we have the ability to um, help them with that, whether that's because they're, they're getting these um, questions because maybe their bank has tightened up. And so that sometimes generates a lot of questions and concerns for these entrepreneurs, whether they're a Fortune 500 CEO or someone just starting their business. Um, both of them have similar concerns. So you're hearing everything from inflation to hiring sort of the gambit. Um, Absolutely, and hiring is a big thing right now. Yeah. So access to capital to grow my business. The backdrop right now is there's a lot of money in the economy uh, due to some of the federal government's actions. Uh, some are sitting on that money. Some are using it. Um, when they're contacting you, they're looking to grow. Uh, talk a little bit about the climate out there. What are you hearing from these entrepreneurs? Entrepreneurs right now, um, they've got, especially in certain vertical markets, they are excited. Their business is growing tremendously. And so, but what their concern is, is that it's growing, but they get other um, concerns that come into play. Is the shoe going to drop? Is my bank going to stop lending? And if that happens, where is my access to capital? And right. so that's a huge concern. So they have these opportunities and they can really leverage them. And so they sometimes come to me to ask the question, are you able to provide funding? And the answer is yes, because in times where things tighten up, banks refer stuff to us. And so the, the issues that they're coming up with, uh, it's a wide range of things. But because they came to me, sometimes they point the question towards cash availability. You know, so I've heard that, you know, cash is like oxygen in a business. You die without it. Yeah. And so sitting on my cash, my reserve is sometimes a good strategy. I'm, I'm going to be risk averse. I'm not going to try to venture. Yet right now with things coming back from the pandemic, you know, admittedly, it's a little bit like waves, right? That the new variant comes in, the new variant comes out, but more and more people are out in the marketplace spending money. Um, how do you see people walking that line between scared, conservative, and taking advantage of this opportunity? Yeah, much of that depends on uh, their historical experience because I have clients that have gone through the recession and the pandemic and some just the pandemic, but both had the same impact on these people. They, the cash they have, they want to keep close to the vest because 
They don't know if there's going to be a downturn, but they still want to take advantage of opportunities. So what they do is they park their cash on the side and they utilize uh, OPM, other people's money. And so on something like that, they'll go ahead and uh, take out a lease or a loan, whether it's with their bank, um, a third party commercial finance company, and they'll utilize that as long as the terms and conditions are satisfactory, because there's always an opportunity cost between you know, them wanting to use the cash they have versus cost of capital. So they typically will uh, want to go out and leverage it because whatever they're, in my situation, whatever they're acquiring is typically an income producing purchase. And so when they're getting a return on investment through that, <clears throat> that mitigates the cost of capital. And you know that is something that they look at, they understand, they're probably acquiring this stuff for a contract and it makes sense for them to use our funds or their bank's funds rather than use the cash they have in the bank. No, I can see where that would a, make me feel secure as an owner because I still have my cash parked over here. But as long as I'm investing in some income producing activity, uh, business expansion, whatever, um, I can justify it. What about infrastructure? I know of one uh, family company that I work with, uh, use some of their pandemic funds to replace the air conditioners in their complex, which was quite large, and to do some infrastructure work. And there's no return on infrastructure, but sometimes you need to do that. How would you advise someone who's in that position that they need to spend say 250 to half a million dollars on needed infrastructure improvement? Yeah, it probably depends on how much cash they have. If they are uh, cash rich, and yeah, nobody's like a Rockefeller, but if they're cash rich, then they can spend cash all they want. But if they're still of that concern that, okay, I want to use this money because I don't want to have a loan that I might have to service for an extended period of time because that could make me ner nervous. But what makes them more nervous is if they use their cash and they have nothing to service their human capital needs. And so in these situations, I, I go to the client and I give them an option, especially if it's large AC units they're putting on their roof, because that kind of stuff can be financed, whether it's, again, with a commercial finance company or a bank. So if it gets financed, whether they pick a two-year term or an eight-year term, then in those situations, they're still keeping their cash to the best. They can pay the contracts off at any point if they want. Um, but it's one of those things where I think a lot of people right now in today's economy are a little bit concerned. And so that's why they're utilizing resources like what we provide to make sure that if there is a downturn or if there is, um, maybe they're not getting paid on time on their contracts, they still have money to provide payroll, rent, you name it. Yeah. So I got into business to run my business. I don't really understand the nuances of how to navigate a large purchase uh, or an expansion. Um, you help with that, right? And if so, talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so um, whether it's opening up a, a first location, second location, third location, or um, even a restaurant that is looking at not necessarily doing another brick and mortar, but maybe doing food trucks. Any of those scenarios um, require a substantial amount of capital and some more than others. Yeah. And so what we do is we talk with them about that and we say, hey, this is just a, a conversation between you and I. And so in those situations, um, it's a Q&A. And when we end up talking with them about what is the cost of this? And if, if you take the dollars that you have parked on the side and use that, is it possible where when you expand into another location, second, third, whatever it might be, or some other large purchase, Will that hamper 
other growth that you want to put together, marketing, um, hiring more people, none of that is cheap. And so you want to make sure that whatever you're doing, you figure it out before you do it. And so we walk through that with them. If, if they think they need X amount of dollars, do they need it right away? Maybe not. And maybe that funding gets provided in chunks as they need it, because why pay for the debt if you don't quite need it yet? Right. So that's, we, we consult with them before they do it, try to understand their business, try to understand what they want to do, not just now, but down the road. And when they come to those conclusions, because sometimes someone will come to me and say, hey, I need $800,000. And that's when we try to drill down with that. And right now they might only need fifty thousand dollars, and that's what we do. That's smart, smart. So you really help them not only with the request, but refining that request to see how much sense it makes, given what they're trying to accomplish. Yes. Yeah. Because it, it makes no sense for us to give them more they, than they need. Then we're not necessarily honoring a relationship. And we're not in there for just a one-time funding. It's a relationship for us, too. Yeah. So talk a little bit about businesses that may be expanding now. And you don't need to use their names. I mean, certainly can if you want. Audience may be interested. But maybe the, the category of business and they're doing this. Just so uh, we as viewers can get some context for some of what's going on. So three or four things that you've got going right now. Sure. So we've got a, a company in Texas, and this company uh, started out with just one veterinarian clinic. Well, what happened is they, they started doing really well, great reputation, and over the years they acquired three, four, five different clinics. And so, and they were spread out, had all the same name, became popular, people liked it because they did a great service. But one of the problems that they had is they were providing um, you know, surgeries for different animals at each of the locations. So when they came to me, they wanted to, to build a building and they wanted to make this a centralized place for a surgery center that is specific to animals. And that ranged from dogs, cats, horses, you name it. Right. So what we did is we provided funding for various equipment, including generators and other things, and got that up and running for them. And so not only are they getting business from their satellite clinics, but they're also getting business from other companies that are veterinarian centers, but don't have the ability to perform the surgeries in this specialized surgery center. And so not only did they centralize that for themselves, but they had an income uh, through all these other resources that needed that. So that that's, one of the recent ones. And then on an ongoing basis, we do franchise funding. And so we've been working with a variety of different franchises, but these franchises, they, uh, there are people exiting corporate America that are opening up these franchises. So when they open them up, the idea is not just to do one location. They typically want to do two, three, four of the same concept and then change and get into another similar concept. So each time they do that, we help them provide for providing them with a funding for each scenario. However, they don't do it all at once. They they use their consultants and they understand that you know if you do too much too soon, it may not be uh, a bad thing, but you run into people problems at that point because you need a manager at each location. If you don't have the management at, the, at each location then they end up having um, issues down the road. So that's what we run into with the franchise market. But there's other companies that we've helped out like um, Mountainside Fitness. Um, years ago, they're a local Arizona company, Tom Hatton, we worked with for years. And so when uh, he first opened his Awatuki location, it was a small operation, we provided necessary dollars for his equipment for that location. And as he grew, we continued to provide funding for all of his big box locations. And so that's a great success story. And Tom did a great job developing and growing his business. And we were part of that. We were not responsible for it, but we were part of that, which was a great feeling. 
Yeah, some wonderful uh, examples there. Um, so in you know, wrapping up uh, our conversation today, what advice would you give to someone like me who owns a business? I'm thinking about expanding, but it's a little bit like that high diving board. I'm a little worried to go up there and jump off of it. Um, what are your words of advice? Well, um, do some research, figure out what you're going to need, not just in the short term and long term. And then also find somebody that you're comfortable with. Um, because just like anything, whether you're looking for someone that you can trust with your investments, it's important to find somebody you can trust providing commercial financing, because not everybody's a nice guy out there. And so with the commercial financing, you want to make sure that uh, you're getting what you need and not overfunded, so you're servicing too much debt. And so you want somebody to work with you through those growth moments. And yeah. if you can find someone like that, um, then that would help you not only on um, human capital needs, like working capital, but also uh, asset acquisition through equipment leasing or equipment financing. Yeah. Well, and I know from our conversations and our relationship that you are considered one of those incredibly good partners. So if you wouldn't mind, um, could you let our viewers know how to reach out to you, uh, your website, your phone number, uh, in case today want to have a conversation? Sure, sure. Uh, my name's Wade Rasmussen. The company is AmeriFund. And my phone number is 480-970-2290. And my email is Wade, W-A-D-E, at AmeriFund, A-M-E-R-I-F-U-N-D-I-N-C.com. Beautiful. Well, I really appreciate you being uh, on the show today. Um, I'm, I will take your information and make sure it's in a post uh, on LinkedIn and also on YouTube. Uh, so viewers, uh, Wade is a wonderful person and, you know, it's worth a great conversation if you're thinking about how to manage cash and investment. So wait, thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, you take care and we'll talk down the road. Sounds or, great, thanks, Steve. Or down, the be or down the beach in this case. <laughs> right <on. laughs> All right, bye-bye.